officially begin. Coming, hello. Hi. Um, so welcome. Uh, I'm Philip Music with the Green Step Studies Program Coordinator over at the MPCA. And so this is our uh, yes, we did with um, um, our third. Okay, December already. Um, a workshop uh, this year. We're going till through May. Our May workshop is going. I think we're still planning to travel down to Red Wing to see uh, and hear about some impressive uh, energy efficiency, renewable energy um, advances uh, with both the uh, city of Red Wing, but also uh, the school system working together. So, um, but for today, we're talking about data and the exciting part: data. So. Uh, Numbers can be kind of boring. Uh, I think the excitement here, uh, Paul and Yusuf from uh, the MPCA, will uh, talk about uh, a collection system and display um, uh, program that you don't have to create that they have linked together and are planning to are planning to deploy for uh, collecting and then for the first time ever, all of us being able to see all of the city uh, step four, step five submission data. So, um, so it's pretty, uh, pretty exciting. So I want to say some, begin with some initial uh, comments about uh, data and measurements, um, and then we'll go on to have um, uh, Paul and Yusuf uh, preview what um, people who are submitting data <laughs> at step four, step five uh, will be able to use. Uh, but first, why don't we go uh, go around the room and maybe we'll uh, introduce yourself and where you're from. Hello everybody, I'm Yosef. I'm a data analyst at uh as you see, and I'll be part of this presentation. So it's Yosef, Yosef okay. Yes. Does anyone want to say Yosef? Yosef, okay. All right, this is it. I'm Paul Pistan, I'm also an analyst with MPCA, um, and I'm presenting here as well. I'm Bill, I'm a tech support here at the league. Yeah. Uh, um, Addison Lewis, I'm a city planner with the city of Jordan. Uh, Mary Herlin, deputy public works director, city of Bloomington, liaison to the city. I'm Mina Salag. I am a Minnesota Green Staff member with the Green Staff Village, and my supervisor is the Green Staff Activities Coordinator. Lauren Walberg, um, planning intern, also with the City of Jordan. Hi, I'm Ali Wilshire, and I'm with the City of Jordan. So, several of you cities. And Anthony have submitted uh, data in the past. Um, so, are there some cities like maybe Hastings? Thinking you're at step three, you would think about submitting a step four. Okay. And that's where we are in that goal. And that's where we're for next year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Same with Jordan. And same with Jordan. Okay. Fantastic. Well, you've come to the right place. Um, I think this will probably be. Uh, we've, I think we scheduled for till 10:30, which should be enough time. But uh, obviously, interrupt with questions. Uh, and welcome to all the people on the um, uh, webinar. So also, webinar people can uh, the chat box. Yes, I can use the chat box though for. Yep. Yeah, okay. So uh, feel free on the webinar to throw in, and then of course the uh, uh, materials and the. Um, webinar uh, will be posted on the um, Green Step workshop site so people can go back and see that in the future. So, all right, without further ado, hey, take a moment. Um, so, um, so in this realm of sort of measure what matters, what matters should get measured, I mean, this is a, sort of a, an old um, sort of concept that really grew pretty early in the 1990s out of the, um, Sort of the academic work uh, and work at the United Nations out of sustainability. It's like if we really care about these bigger systems, uh, we need to measure the status of those systems. And so, so in the in the sort of the literature around sustainability, sustainable development, it was sustainability indicators. And uh, there's a national organization, um, uh, and uh, links to this are under in the Green Step website. It's Best Practice 24, Community Engagement and Indicators. I think that's the name of the best practice. But uh, action number three is, is you know, um, report on measures of um, sustainability progress and status in your city. So, um, so sustainability indicators across the state of Minnesota, um, initial work was done by Red Wing in the 1990s. 
uh, early 1990s by the city of Minneapolis. And the city of Minneapolis was, it was probably 90, it was probably 94 when the city was contemplating uh, a sustainability plan, which was at like 106 pages, like big draft. Uh, and the option was, and I was working with them uh, at the time we hired a, a consultant, and the option was, do we have a big, sick plan, or do we do, uh, do we we think about what matters in the city of Minneapolis and distill that down to a set of sustainability indicators? And so Minneapolis went the sort of sustainability indicators route, but it was not a small uh, process. It took easily two years to distill about 28 measures, and their measures were, you know, they were the city broader, so they were looking at uh, uh, measures like, you know, uh, voting participation. Uh, I think now there might be sort of issues like, or indicators like wealth disparity, educational attainment, educational disparities. Um, a broad process that took several years, not an insignificant amount of staff time, because crafting sort of indicators to uh, display or sort of report on the status, uh, sustainability status of your city is, is takes a lot of thinking and Typically, sustainability indicators are highly linked, so you have an indicator, and some of those are in our green step, step four, um, five uh, metric uh, elements. Some of those are highly linked, like percent of housing units within a 10-minute uh, walk of a green space. So that's that's looking at a number of different uh, uh, um, things, not just green space, uh, not just sort of land use, land arrangements. Um, but as as Green Step, as we began as we began um, as we began creating the program, we started with uh, step one: cities are recognized for a city council resolution to sort of work on sustainability issues. Step three, two and three, as you know, you're you're typing in text. How have you completed actions? We did not have step four and five. We hadn't really thought about them because we. We felt like asking cities to create a suite of sustainability indicators is like way too much work. We just sort of weren't there in, in, 19, uh, in, in 2010 when Green Step launched. So what we um, what we did instead, two things, uh, as you know, we said, well, there's this B3 building benchmarks and beyond uh, city building uh, energy registry um, maintained by the uh, state of Minnesota and the white group. So we said, well, let's make it one of those step three um, uh, you know, high priority actions to uh, put data into the V3 database. So you, you've all been doing that if you're at step three. Um, the other, after it was probably maybe 2011, maybe a year after we launched Green Step, um, when a couple of people, a couple of cities and an architecture firm, the architects, came to us and said, well, Green Step has all these action reports in their text, but how do we know that in aggregate, for example, transportation actions are actually making a difference with like vehicle miles traveled or greenhouse gas emissions from the transportation sector in your city? And we said, well, you're right. We have no way, we have no measure, no calculation, no data on that. So um, we've had, we, we launched this regional indicators initiative. And so on the front page of, of the Green Step site, you can click on regional indicators and that, that site has evolved over time, and we now have um, greenhouse, total uh, citywide greenhouse gas um, uh, a number for about 60 cities, maybe. And then we have, we, we, and we, but we break it down. We always thought more useful rather than just giving one greenhouse gas number for a, a city. We have um, uh, vehicle miles traveled, uh, water use, energy use, uh, solid waste, although Frustratingly, that solid waste number is still a uh, uh, calculator uh, derived down from the county score data. Sent <clears throat> so, but but there are measures there, and that that site has actually been using this Tableau uh, software in the last two years, um, and that data in the last year has is has fed in for some cities, although it wasn't working yesterday when I looked at it. But um, these regional indicators indicators data have been feeding into this wedge diagram. So uh, a city can see their greenhouse gas sort of business as usual. If, if uh, greenhouse gas emissions continue on the 
we have at least five years of data for I think about 66. So we can this wedge diagram that regional indicators data flow in so you can see business as usual, and then you can pick wedges like I want uh, to uh, increase the energy efficiency of our manufacturing sector by 10%. Um, regional indicators grabs met mostly met council data, but it, it grabs data on your manufacturing sector and it, it shows that decrease in greenhouse gases going out 2030 or maybe 2040. Uh, or you can say, I uh, simply, I want our you know, our city operations to be climate neutral by 2030, 2040. So those wedges, um, that, that's, a, that's a really great use of the, the data. And that's how we're using regional indicators. Where regional indicators will make, and we'll probably have a workshop on this next year, there are going to be some major changes. The Met Council has a as a full-time uh, data person who did work at uh, LHB Architects uh, and at Great Plains Institute, uh, which has helped with regional indicators. Uh, so we'll have much more data uh, in a year that regional indicators site for Met Council region cities will be much better. Greater Minnesota, we're still trying to sort of figure that out, and we're actually sort of making a, a pitch at the at the governor's office for a little for more resources for this. But but that's the Yes. The last time I was in regional indicators was like a year ago, so I don't know if this has changed, but the data, the most recent data was like 2015. 15, so yes. Is it more up to date or is it still right around there? Um, I don't think so. And I think we're still at, yeah, so that, and it's, yeah, and depending on the month you looked, there have been more cities, fewer cities. Yeah. So it's been, I mean, I think it's it's been a great way to uh, answer that, measure what matters, which is, you know, what if we have a city, and now we have 20, yeah, we just posted that we have 25 cities, uh, great step cities that have some sort of energy or climate goal. So if you have a goal, we need to see hard numbers like how how are we actually doing on the ground. So so the effort's been great, but it's been very sporadic, and funding has been everything. From, we had DOE money, we had the Knight Foundation money, we had council money, we had some money from us, some money from Environmental Quality Boards, money from the Department of Commerce. So it's been a actually a wonderful hodgepodge, and it's I think like a number of green step actions. We've uh, we've sort of progressed um, uh, very opportunistically, um, but um, but but we felt like we needed to just as we have done with defining a suite of actions, uh, green step best practice actions for you to. <coughs> Met these. And if you're doing something slightly different, as you know, we tweak the actions in the star, star gun sometimes. We felt like we needed to define, sort of pull out, well, what do we feel like? What are we hearing from cities? What, do, what sort of measures do we feel like? What, are those, what, what, are, what things matter? So we defined these step four, step five uh, metrics, which I'll get to, and, and then these specific metric elements. And then today, uh, Paul and Yusuf will talk about a much easier way uh, for all for you all to uh, submit the numbers, go back and edit, submit, and then for us to actually see for the first time how all cities are, are, are doing comparing, slicing and dicing the data. Um, I just wanted to say, so uh, there are a few cities, and again, under uh, on the Green Step website, under Best Practice 24, uh, probably action one, two, or three, some cities like uh, Burnsville post, and this is a really nice, I think, infographic, uh, sort of a selection. Um, some cities have a sustainability re report, which is much longer, more detailed. This one I love because it's, uh, and it's just two pages, so Sue Bass, who's been a long time Green Step coordinator down in um, uh, Burnsville, uh, produces this. So, so it's only one way to, take numbers and tell a story and obviously share with uh, not just city council members as it's presented uh, usually to the city council, uh, but also putting it on your website and sharing with residents. So, so sort of data being used to tell a story and help people understand that individual actions or, or city work actually contributes to sort of moving numbers, big numbers uh, is great. So uh, just an example there. But, okay, so, with uh, with the green step measure, so so uh, step four and five is the final build out of green step cities. So we're not going to be creating anything new. We feel like the program is plenty sort of robust. We really where it needs to move is I think we need to have um, more focus and more staff and time to help 
your cities just one on one, and we do some of that, or, or we're, we we have these cohorts like the cities charging ahead, the electric vehicle sort of study uh, group. We actually feel like that's where GreenSet needs to put it. So we won't have any more recognition levels that four and five is it. Um, and today we'll hear about how it's we've made it easier. So um, uh, as you probably know, finding and there'll be changes to the actual pages, but um, on any GreenSet page, you just click on step uh, steps one through five, and then you the button the city performance metric. You click on that. Right now, that um, <coughs> That button on the lower right goes to uh, a Great Plains Institute page, as you know. That's going to change. I think it's going to be an environmental quality board page. So Kristen Moraz, who works, um, spends half of her, her day working uh, on Green Step, um, I think she's going to be taking over. So uh, I think you'll be in touch with Kristen as opposed to Abby about uh, questions and submitting, uh, submitting data. And it'll be, uh, it'll be an EPB page. Um, Maybe sometime next year, the Green Step Cities website will be moving to a different software platform, and, and it'll be a um, Green Step page. But you know what? As long as the links, as long as you know how to find it, I think it really, really matters. Um, other basics, so we're collecting uh, data for the third year. Um, May 1st, just like um, making any edits or to your action reports or any uh, new action reports. Uh, May 1 is the, is the usual. Um, Deadline, and I think as we've done for the last two years, on May 1st, you may feel like you don't have all of the step four metric numbers you wanted to report. So I think we'll certainly give you a little bit of extra time, but the League of Minnesota Cities Board of Directors actually confers step four and five five recognition. So they need to sort of see the data, and their board actually <coughs> send item, but. Um, their board meeting is usually the middle of May leading up to the June conference where we recognize the four five cities. So, so the May 1 deadline is not hard, but you can't like stretch out to months probably. Although we, you know, we're kind of easy graders here at except so there can be some stuff. Yes. Yeah. Um, so beginning year three, does that mean we cannot move to step four in year two? Yes. Not a pro, I mean, some, Cities, like with maybe Rochester last year, submitted um, two years of data at, uh, yeah, submitted two years of, of, of data last year and showed improvement in three of the metric elements. And so they were recognized at both step four and step five. So, so yeah, so cities do come in um, at both levels, but some cities, it's just the process of gathering one year of, um, of data or a you know, uh, data for December 31st. Um, that's enough work, and we we just sort of recognize that that effort. Uh, so you can be recognized at step four, or step four and step five. Yeah, and you know, technically we're recognize you at step four at well, it'd be 2019, or step five at 2019. So in 2020, you need to obviously resubmit and show improvement to be able to um, continue an improvement in the same metrics you reported on previous year or pick other uh, uh, metric elements so so it's really a yearly unlike step two and three where you're recognized for just having completed um, X number of best practice actions step four and five is recognition each each year because ideally you're you're working this into what might be a, a you know, some cities, you know, just have a vast data collection element for all kinds of things. And <clears throat> state of Minnesota and the county requires all kinds of numbers. Um, we're so we're asking for, and you know, the state auditor had a program where you would report uh, numbers like crime stats and dollars spent on waste fire. And there was a there was a little program out of the state auditor's office where you get a tiny bit of money back, and we worked really hard to try to make that a large amount of money and didn't work to add so. So we know cities gather lots of numbers. We we feel like, although we're open to, as always, sort of suggestions and complaints and um, ideas, but we feel like the numbers in step four or five are, are useful. They're useful to gather every year. They can be like B3. Ideally, they can be worked into a, a, a city staff person's regular work. So it's just, it's just one of the things you do. And then um, 
well, as we'll hear for the first time, you'll be able to see your uh, your information displayed, and then you can you know, slice it and dice it in cool ways. So we, we think it's we think we've got something really great here. So and I'm thinking it, would, it probably will be really useful for. I mean, other cities can maybe you might want to talk to Paul and Joseph to like how can I do this in my city if if I have a I guess you need licenses for that SNAP survey, which is the data collection, and Tableau. You need you need to yeah, you need to spend money to, yeah. Well, okay, so Paul and Joseph will tell you more about that. It seems pretty great to me. So any other, let's see, before I go on, just a few comments about actual metrics here. Any other questions or any questions from the webinar people? Okay. All right, so when you when you click on that uh, step four or five, button on the Green Step Cities website. Uh, you jump to the right now um, Great Plains Institute page. <clears throat> a month or two you'll jump to an EQB page. Doesn't matter, you won't know. Um, and you and you see the list of what we just find as, as metrics. So the so the metrics are uh, they follow our, our process um, or our uh, sort of the rubric in Green Step Cities that we have uh, buildings uh, we, we have best practices around buildings, uh, well, we jump to um, transportation, land use, uh, environmental management, and then community and economic development. So the metrics uh, are not a, a total parallel. We don't have one metric for each of the 29 best practices. Um, we, did, we did combining um, because we didn't want this to be overwhelming. We, we think it's sort of a robust, a robust enough number of metrics. And within each what we call metric, 1 through 18, we have specific sort of uh, what we call metric elements. Maybe we need a better term, but metric element is just the sort of the data point, uh, the number you would put in. So uh, number of public uh, certified green buildings, that's a data element. Uh, a second data element under um, green buildings would be number of private certified green buildings. So two data um, So we have, yeah. So um, so that's sort of the I mean, I guess, uh, terminology. Um, we have defined sort of like we defined for step three, where there are some best practices or best practice actions that we we think are so important that you need to complete those to be recognized in step three. We have for um, submitting. Uh, step four, you recognize the step four. We have some core uh, metrics that you need to report on. Um, and they're in red. A couple of them, like number 11, wastewater, and number 17, climate, um, a city would only report on if, for example, you have a, a wastewater treatment plant or <coughs> own and control distri distribution um, uh, sewers. And the climate um, metric you would only report on if if data is being gathered for you by the regional indicators efforts. So, but but all the others um, you need to report on, and we're saying you need to uh, send us data for all the metric elements underneath the city buildings, transportation, stormwater, renewable energy. Um, I think some cities have. Maybe don't just don't have access to a few of the metric elements. So again, you know, in Green Step, uh, you know, we're kind of easy graders, me especially. So um, I think for some cities, not every data we don't have data elements in every city. But um, uh, in the first year or so, I was going to say, if you run into problems, uh, just uh, just give us a call, give us a call. And again, I think it's me, Kristen, who's going to be sort of running this. Where I tend to, uh, I work with you all on. Um, Action reports for step two and three. I think Kristen is really going to be taking over step, steps four and five. So, uh, if you're a step C, if you're a uh, uh, if you're a smaller uh, city, uh, we have maybe 15 or so category C small cities, um, sort of lower capacity cities across the state. Then, then you simply report the metric elements for the uh, uh, metrics in red. If you're a category B city, sort of intermediate city, then you need to report 
metric elements under three additional, so three additional um, metrics. So maybe you throw in land <coughs> uh, open space parks, trees, and solid waste. And if you're a category A city, then you need to throw in data for five uh, additional metrics. And it's, it's again, the process of, of sort of ferreting out, finding the data, um, getting it in a format that, uh, uh, you know, sort of, it, it, uh, there's that internal process that uh, we think just like other aspects of sort of sustainability work, it, it, it probably has some cross departmental, well, certainly for a coordinator, you're going to be going to different departments together. And just that fact alone, we've heard back from cities, is a, is a useful process. Um, it also just raises the highlight of someone in your city saying, well, why do you want this data? We don't collect that. And so, so that really sort of, I think, forces us all to say, well, why do we want to collect this data? And how can we use it? So those are sort of the bigger sort of questions and issues that we feel like this step four or five process sort of helps cities uh, go through. Um, and again, it's And they're sort of vast databases of city sustainability indicators. But again, we wanted to uh, define them for you, like we did with the best practice actions. But we're open to sort of hearing your like tales of woe, like and how if it's really difficult to gather some of these. I mean, we haven't heard too much of a issue or a problem. But if there's some obvious things you feel like really should be in this suite of uh, indicators, or if there's some things that are not quite right. We in the in the guidance, and we'll show you on the website. In the guidance, you know, we have uh, especially for um, especially for uh, wastewater collection systems. We know that cities have. I've seen five or six different uh, numbers collected to measure uh, progress for uh, inflow and in infiltration. So sort of the the efficiency, or you know, keeping clear water out of your on your collection system, uh, there, there, there are different ways and different city engineers feel passionately about what number they want to collect. We've picked, I think, yes, we picked a number, I think, on I and I. If your city really wants to use a different number that we always have a um, sort of explain if you're collecting a different number. And so we have a little box, and you'll see that on the, on the survey, the data collection system this year. So again, we're, we, you know, we want to hear back from you. But we think we've done a pretty good job in listening and then reflecting back. So, all right, so that's uh, those are the metrics, metric elements under each of the 18. And then for step four recognition, additional metrics if you're a category A or B city. So, any questions on this so far? Again, this is sort of our sort of, you know, green step rules of the road, as it were. Um, okay, so then. So then step five seemed kind of easy to me, but um, at least I've heard back from uh, Abby, who couldn't be here today. Actually, Abby and Kristen would be here, but they're out, um, actually out, in, I think they're in uh, Maryland. There's a, if we've mentioned this before, there is a national, um, a national organization of Green Step-like programs. So there are 12 other programs like Green Step. They're all different, although there are some common elements and uh, <clears throat> Green Step stole a few aspects of our program from Sustainable Jersey, which has like 12 staff, this huge program out of Jersey. Anyway, so Chris and Abby couldn't be here. But, um, but Abby has said that um, recognition of step five, showing improvement on three or more metric elements, specific elements, um, has, it's not a, has not been a trivial thing for, um, even in total, we have, I think we probably have 60 or 70 metric elements sort of data boxes. Um, trying to improve it in three is not a trivial thing. So, so that's the recognition uh, sort of minimum uh, for uh, for Green Step. And in our, even though in our guidance for each metric, we 
we if we if we can if we found it we suggest what is a reasonable sort of goal or minimum improvement we're not requiring any minimum so for example you know if you improve your uh, or decrease your inflow and infiltration number by you know a tiny bit whatever the tiny increment is we give you credit for that at this point now maybe maybe as time goes on we'll like crank up the you know we'll have some like minimums like for example uh, recycling rate needs to increase by at least five percent. I mean, we might, but again, that's you know, over over time. Obviously, Greenstem has evolved, and as you all get better and um, have uh, you know more success and accelerate your efforts, then the Green Step will keep just a tiny bit ahead of you. So there might be changes right now. Uh, this is what <coughs> and we're also we have as we did last year, maybe it was the first year in the, in the spreadsheet you filled out. We do have boxes for putting in numbers that, in aggregate, calculated your city operations greenhouse gas footprint. We're going to ask for those numbers. Yes, yes. They're blue. Yeah. They're, so, so we'll see from Paul will show us. So we're asking for those numbers, and there will be a step. We're thinking a separate tableau of sort of charts to display or. or that's, that's, I don't. We haven't. I haven't seen that yet. But um, we're gathering the numbers. It's not. It's not an eligible metric element. It's not required. Um, I think it's one of these things. Just just like cities have a city budget, um, the operations. Obviously, we feel like it's useful for cities to be um, gathering, reporting, looking at what is your city operations carbon footprint. Um, if for no other reason to sort of have that experience and credibility of working to, to decrease the city operations footprint, um, measuring it, and then as you work with your business community and work with your residents, certainly if you're a city that has established a, um, uh, a city energy climate goal, or if you with the, the Metro worked with Excel Energy on a partners in, in energy process, you know, you're out there sort of exhorting your businesses and residents to take actions to decrease their footprint. So we, we feel like walking the talk is, is important for the city and we're going to make it easy for you by measuring it. But right now it's not required. It's just one of those, the data we think is, we pulled it together, we think it's pretty easy. We've done all the sort of the, you know, the calculations between um, um, uh, BTUs and kilowatts. We made that calculation using grids. <coughs> You know, grid standards uh, to show the greenhouse gas equivalent numbers. So, does that work for you? So, I think that's yes. I think that's it. Before I pass, pass it over to Paul. Um, so, any comments, questions before we see this whole survey? Survey so much easier than a spreadsheet, right? If the spreadsheet had all the numbers and the columns and the yeah. So, I think this is. All right. All right. One second here to get set up. All right. I might not be able to use this since we're on. Yeah, that's not going to do anything for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, is it possible to blow up the lower portion here? Working on it. How's that? Probably good. Cool. All right. Hello again, everybody. I'm Paul Bassano with the Data Analysis Unit with the PCA. Um, and we are part of the group within the agency that helps out all the different environmental programs, for example, the Test Cities program. And um, this is kind of an opportunity that you know, Philip reached out to us for, um, and it's the data submission process for the Test Cities program. Um, sounds like we're probably going to be the easy part of the process. Gathering the data must be, you know, the harder the harder part of this. But um, hopefully, you know, this part is much easier. It can make it more streamlined and more consistent with um, gathering all the data. It'll be easier on our end to collect it into one massive database. We can aggregate everything and then even show it to all of you as you're filling out um, your online form. Um, so this slide right here kind of just shows. 
the original spreadsheet if you're a city that has reached step four or step five. This is basically the spreadsheet that, that you see um, where you have the green core metrics that are highlighted and the blue city operations one. Um, and then this right here on the, on the right hand side of the slide is the uh, metrics page that was found on the Great Plains Institute website. As Bill mentioned, this is probably going to move um, to a different location, but that's probably not going to be all that necessary. Not all that's something that you probably won't need to worry about because just if you go to the next slide. Because we're going to switch the, the method of collecting data into this SNAP survey. So SNAP survey is a data collection tool that the state of Minnesota has been using in different agencies. Um, I know DHS, the Department of Human Services, uses it um, very widely. Um, and the PTA uses it in a number of our different um, environmental programs too. Uh, I know some cities have to submit data for their SSPS programs for their wastewater infrastructure. We use SNAP surveys for that. And we saw the opportunity to use SNAP surveys for the Green Step cities because um, like we mentioned you know, with the spreadsheet, it kind of can get a little cumbersome where you have one copy of the spreadsheet and then you may need to pass it on to somebody else who has the most recent version, all of that stuff. But with SNAP surveys, it, it, it has a number of features that make this process so much easier where um, each city that's going to be part of this program will just receive an invitation email with a link to the survey um, and they can fill it in um, you know, as, as needed. And they can share that link with another person within the same, you know, same department or you can share it outside of the department. Um, each individual city will have its own login um, information. So you'll get to see some of the data that you have submitted in the past um, if that's available. You can just go to the next slide. And so these are just a number of the features of uh, SNAP surveys. So like I mentioned, the automated email invitations um, there will be reminders as well. Uh, Philip mentioned that uh, the process will probably start sometime in February. Um, that's probably when you'll receive your first emails through the cities who are going to be taking part in step four and step five. Um, like I said, there'll be a, a, a unique link to access the, the online form, um, which you can then share to other people um, within your department, um, or if you need to kind of have somebody, the city planner, the city engineer, to kind of fill in the data that way. Um, SNAP surveys also have, has the function of uh, saving your data automatically as well as you click to the next page. Um, there is a save button, um, but it kind of does that automatically. Um, and then the last thing, as I mentioned again, um, the form will show previous data if you've submitted it before. Um, right now, there are, I think we have data for 15 step four and five cities. Since that list is going to grow. This is going to be easier on our end to kind of collect the data, have it all in a database, and that way it'll be easier for all the cities to kind of see all of the data as well. So just if you just go back on one slide, I'll just do a quick demo of um, the survey itself. Um, there's a link here. Um, so there's an intro page, easy enough. It kind of just describes what um, the form is and what information it will be requesting. And I know Philip has already mentioned that. Um, click next, please. Um, and so this, if you've seen the spreadsheet, this looks very similar. This kind of the same idea is that we just wanted to make it into an online form versus another file that we need to keep track of um, in your email. So in this case, you have all of the different metrics, all the different um, so you have city buildings and lighting. Um, here you have the green, green buildings as well. Um, some of the the, the green highlighted metrics are here, and these are the core metrics, is that right? Yeah. That, um, that go into credit for the step five improvement. Uh, oh, yeah, eligible met, right, eligible metrics for, right. Yes. Step five. Um, and then the, the city operations metrics are here as well. Um, and there is data validation here, so um, if it's asking for a number, It'll make you put in a number that way it can be consistent with what's been submitted before and what the right data that we're looking for. It kind of 
minimizes the need for back and forth. Obviously, that's still necessary, and especially if you have questions about what metrics to submit. Um, one other feature here that I'd like to highlight is are these links right here. Um, so in the very first slide I showed, um, I showed the Great Plains Institute website where there are the links to all the guidance documents. With SNAP surveys, we've integrated that into the form as well. So you said, if you want to just click this link. And right now it just goes to the city buildings and lighting page um, that's right now housed in the Great Plains Institute website. Um, it will change, but you won't need to worry about that because it will be integrated into the uh, online form as well. Um, so that's, again, an another way hopefully it will make your uh, data submission process much easier, much more streamlined. Um, can you just go back to um, then we can just scroll down. Um, again, you all, have, if you've submitted for step four and five, you've seen this before. Um, but it has all the information that uh, the spreadsheet was requesting. I know there are a couple of changes um, for this coming year. But you know, again, hopefully this will make it much easier for all of you and um, easier on our end as well. And as you know, more cities join in and become part of step four and step five, um, it'll be hopefully much more of a smooth process um, on the data collection side of it. That's all I have. Yes. So this might be more for Philip, but will the spreadsheet and be continued to be maintained so that we can download it and have those sheets in one place? Because if you're new to the program, this is great once you're like in the program sure. and you're doing it, but if you're new to the program and trying to hmm. coordinate it, with a number of uh -huh. different people to familiarize yourself with things. It's really nice to have everything in one place. Hmm. Um, hmm. That's certainly possible. I can so part of collecting it this way, putting it in the database, we can export that data export. into spreadsheets as well. That way you can see your previous data without having to be in this process. That would be great because yeah. I mean, if you coordinated with a number of people, like I cut from the spreadsheet and sure. say these three are the only things that I need from you, right. and so that they don't have to click through this or um, everyone doesn't hmm. have to see the system. Yeah. Okay. We can definitely do that. Um, okay. Yeah. And again, right. you, all of these data are public, and so we'll just include them back onto the website, and we'll, we'll work with Philip on that. But okay. Um, okay. yeah, everything. Should be easy for us to, to kind of to gather the data for you as well. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, maybe would it be even possible to? Well, I was, was going to say like click a click a button, you know, show me a download, you know, allow me to download a spreadsheet of. Well, I guess it would be what, what? Probably not through Snap Survey, but my colleague Yusuf will show that that's possible in Tableau as well. Um, we can probably develop reports that are specific to each of the cities. Okay. Um, so if you have data from previous years, you can see your progress. Um, so you might want to all of Yeah, and I think about, it's not only data from previous years, but that's great. But yeah. if you're new to, you know, we're in a position where right. we're new to this. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I have to let my engineers know, these three measures apply to you over, you know, in six months, I'm hoping they have that. Right. And so to slice and dice it and coordinate with a number of people, really, for me to have to go through a, system to find that, oh, these are my questions I need to ask others, actually is really challenging. You can definitely do that. I think that, okay. I mean, this is part of it too, so we're getting feedback about what's going to be helpful for everybody. So, yeah. any other comments or questions? How can we make this you know, better? Hopefully this will be better because <laughs> we're watching this. Um, for, for this program, we have gotten very good feedback in other MPCA programs with using um, SNAP surveys as a data collection tool. So um, if you can think of any other things, um, just reach out to Philip and then he'll talk to me about making edits to this about you know, how we can make it better for you. I think we've done a better job of putting a number. So, you know, 14.6, 14.5. Uh, so at least we, we've, done a, we've done a better job of, of um, defining each data box, but um, you're right, if some, if you want someone to be collecting 1.1, 14.6, 18.3, yes. that's what you're thinking of. Yeah. Yes. 
And if you're just new and you're familiarizing yourself with a program you're, you don't understand or which is kind of, right, and, and measure, you want to see. Skim okay, down. Yeah. Okay. This is yeah. the aggregate of what I need to accomplish over the next year. Yeah. Okay. Now, would a, um, I guess, a, uh, a document that kind of just has it, so maybe a PDF file of oh, PDF a snap of. survey, would that be helpful as well? Because that will show each individual question without you having to click next or even be on this page? Um, or is the spreadsheet still preferable for you? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'd have to give it some thought. Okay. I mean, cause it, with a PDF, what I would end up doing is probably screenshotting things and sending sure. them an email to so-and-so and say, these are your measures. I mean, in the city the size of Bloomington, <coughs> I coordinate with 30 people right. to bring measures, to, to bring information mm -hmm. together to this one place. And I don't want mm -hmm. them to have to look through other people's information to get to what they need to do. Right. I'll never get my information. I'll never get this data I need. Right. Um, we have to really make it easy. And, and I use my administrative assistant does a lot of that, like slicing and dicing, and mm -hmm. I'd like it to take her a day instead of five. Okay. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. and, okay. and yeah. if we have it, Simple for then it's great. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Any questions? All right. So, I mean, we're running pretty early, but I'll pass it on to Yusuf, who will show um, some of the things that Tableau can do with data that have been aggregated. And, um, it's another tool that we use agency wide. Uh, I was just telling Philip before start of the webinar, it's a software package that this, the PCA was one of the first, you know, agencies that adopted it, um, and it's a pretty powerful tool about being able to slice and dice your data and do data an analysis and visualization. So, Yusuf, All right. yours. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. I'm Joseph. I'm a All right. So my part of this project is create a Tableau workbook. Basically, Tableau is an analytical platform that will make your life easier analyzing the data. It's very easy, very friendly. And what the most thing I like about it is very impressive. And let's say, for example, like here, I just want to analyze energy data uh, that the research has. I took the energy data and I create a small map. I just quick analysis of bar chart. Then I add some filters. As you can see here, for example, I select, you can select many years, and we pick that it's going to collect all the data from the previous years we have. Then we're going to graph them, right? Uh -huh. or, chart, or um, in a visualization um, um, bar chart, or any other, any other analytical mapping. Then what we're going to do is we're going to um, add all the years, then we're going to compare the years. So if you want to see, for example, Friendsville in 2018. Can you select anything else? Yeah. This is so it's what it's much faster. It just is asking for your for the stuff. So you're selecting 2018. Now you can see all the cities in 2018. Now you could go here and select, for example, the city. As you can see, Friendsville doesn't have any data. So it's not going to be a lot. So if you select just Egan, here you go. Now we can see map. So the map shows you what Egan is. Also, this shows green here because we're looking at the housing unit growth. As you can see, there's a lot of growth around Egan. And as you can see, also, we hover over it or you hover over the bar, for example. As you can see here, it shows you the city you selected in Egan, the selected year is 2018, and what's selected here, we're looking at the KTTU first quarter, first per year, right, sheet, is 49.38. The uh, dollar, dollar uh, amount per score budget is 0.71. The ratio is 38. The street lights are 2%, and the traffic signs are 100%, and the city within the properties are 36%. Right? So if we want to look at another kind of data, right, we're just going to go, for example, uh, click dollar per square footage. 
Now it's going to show me that it's at 27. Just either you could hover over it and see all the data you want, decide, you know, go from a sheet to a sheet. This is how I build it. Or you can just go from a sheet to a sheet and look at a bar chart. For example, if you unselect vegan and just select all the data, all the cities, let's see you want to compare yourself to other cities based on the dollar amount. I first quote, but it does see here, vegan is pretty much around 0.7. And you can see here, Edinburgh is like, could you hover over it? Here is 2.03. So it's like basically what we're trying to do is compare the cities to each other. Also, you could compare from a year to year. You know, price goes, first quarter punch up or down, and things like that. And just like in like the years, and you could go from there. Also, another way, and do it like you can select another sheet called the ratio, the street price, if you could click and down to track price or track signs. And you can do it in the bar of track signs. And you can see that a lot of them are 100%. You know, um, hover over you know, here, Atlanta, Pakistan, Indonesia. And it's very important for us to get really accurate data so you could have a better, or full data, that you could have a, a better dual vision and better um, analysis. Does someone comb through the data to make sure it's accurate? Well, this this is the first time we can see it so easily, quickly. Uh, yes, I think what we'll be doing is we start to see <clears throat> this data visualization. We'll say like, what's going on with yeah, St. Paul or White Bear Lake? It's like is that yeah, right? So or like St. Paul's square St. foot Paul's, per year? I was like, was wow, that's that, so low. So low. Yeah. And is it because of something, or is the data entered incorrectly? I, or? I think this is, yeah. this is we'll get on the phone and say what's okay. okay. This is what's good about visualizing data is you can either look at it and be like, okay, this is doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. right? Or you can be like, okay, this is low, this is high, what's going on here, this is right, okay. Just like basically giving you an alert to say, make sure this data, because when you compare it to other, other cities, you'd be like, okay, why is that so long, you know, the traffic signal. So like, okay, we need to reach out to them, make sure that they submitted the data the right way, but they entered the wrong one, you know, or something like that. Um, you know, it's uh, it's really hard to control what people submit and if people want to enter the right data or not. So it's up to them. But when you visualize it, you yourself can tell, hey. Or even though when the people come, the city will come and see this uh, visualization, you'll be like, okay, I think I answered the data wrong. I need to fix it. So they'll contact Paul and they'll contact me and I'll fix it. Also, another way is you could, um, for example, you don't want to use this filter, right? You just want to use the map and select like two cities. Let's say we select these two. Just want to go in here and select the yeah circle or just want to select the right side. So we just select whatever cities you want. They go say yeah, we want to select those two. Oh, so that's cool. Now I have <laughs> two different things. So it's like if you want to only like go, for example, you want to see. So for example, if you're Saint Anthony, could you click out Saint Anthony? Click outside it. Okay, so if you start just over here, so you see there's a, there's a radius here. So it'll show you, like, okay, I want to see 70 miles from this point, or I want to see like three miles from my city that is next to me. And it's going to show you the closest cities to you. And instead of you select, it's like, okay, I want to see me. how we're doing 17 miles away or 20 miles away from the city that next to us. Uh, that's another thing. Or also, you could select, for example, a really random CD shape. So if you go here, pop, and select this one, and just click out to the front of it. So it's good. Let's select this one over here. Let's say for really hard reasons. You want to see this one, and you want to see this one. It's going to go do. So what would you do is uh, don't unclick it. So just like hover over this, then go over here and hover. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so basically, you would just come over here. Huh. 
know, I say you want to do this for really odd reasons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that would work. However, easiest way to do it, if you want to want to deal with maps, whatever, just come to the city, select whatever city you want, and there's not a lot of cities. But sometimes we, we deal with a really raw, large data and a really large uh, city, so we just want to select. Um, also, if it's like I'm to like filter by the sheets and go from a sheet to a sheet, and every sheet will give you a different thing, but if you hover over it, it will give you the full data for energy. No um, that's one thing. Um, you could do, also, you could filter with the with the map itself, there's like a small search here that you just click on it and just type your city name so it just has to build. No, sorry. Or, I don't know. Sure. Okay, so it's pretty friendly, very fast, and it just, it's fun, it's fun to keep. Um, and like I said, it's very very soft uh, in, in like previous years that you submitted the data. Am I correct that the data that we submit through the system that Paul presented is what shows up in here? It's going to show up here. And do we need a license to access this no. data, or is it and available? This is, going to be, uh, this is going to be in the website. So you guys can you just use it in the website, and we're going to have like a really just a broad uh, tableau workbook that will show everything in conclusion. But they're also going to have things as filters. You can filter by the cities or go really specific. Also, going to do support for specific um, cities, and we're going to put them in the cities pages. Uh, that is through three steps. So, we're going to do that as well. Um, but for now, we just this workbook is just a sample of what we can do with the data. I will create this sample just to show you the, um, in the, uh, today. Uh, but the most important thing is doing a workbook uh, with Tableau is to get all data. As you can see here, uh, there is some cities that did not submit their data, and we're hoping that when they see something like this, they're like, okay, you know, other cities are looking at us now. They don't need to submit their data, so we do them. So that's that here. Now we go to the green building step. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to separate, like in energy, we're trying to separate the buildings, and so, so basically separate the data to make sense with each other. So over here, I built this dashboard just to show you uh, the certified green buildings. City, uh, the city building versus uh, private owned building. So these are private owned buildings. And you can see here in Renville, there is what, one. So for example, they're all two by 20. So you always have to filter by the year just to see, because it summarizes the data. But we have filter that gives you all there. So in 2018, Brazil did not spend any data. However, Egan, uh, as you can see here, Egan. They have total of 13 buildings, so um, one is city building, city owned building, and uh, 12 are private owned buildings, so total 13. Then you can see what kind of uh, framework they use the city ones and the private ones. Then the rating they have, rated 12, one, and uh, for every green for school footage, they don't submit no data here, they don't submit no data here. As you can see, submitting the data is easy. So that's that here. As you can see, there's a lot of um, private green buildings in Inner Perry. They have 10. So they have 73. So they submit private buildings in uh, Inner Perry, they have 73 buildings. Um, the city, they did not, well, we don't know. They didn't submit any. Um, so if you go to the city buildings, so these are only city buildings, city owned by government buildings. So as you can see here, Egan, for example, Egan, there is one, one building. See, as you can see, there is not much city owned, government owned buildings. Um, the, the max is five. Compared to the private ones, it was up to 70. Hmm. So, just to show what's going on in comparison to private and uh, government. So, that's, that's pretty much it. What we're hoping is to accomplish is through all surveys to get full data. And we're going to link that data from the survey. It's going to go from the survey to a database and from the database right to the table. So, Double, hopefully, the trade one. Every time you submit the data, you can see it right away.
or it's going to be automatic. Oh, live as in if you're filling out your survey, you can then go to the page that would show the Tableau work and you'd see not quite. Oh, not it's not that automatic, but you have to do a little tweak. Oh, that Kristen it's needs. It's going to be always updated. Yeah. Uh, so Chris, so Chris, maybe Kristen once a day would just click something. If you refresh it and refresh, it, then it would work. Ah, okay. Yeah. Just okay. All right. So that's that. We're gonna build a lot of tabs. We're gonna build this as a sample to show you guys for today. Um, what you guys think? This is something you would be interested to see. Um, you know, I feel like it would be really good because you can add a lot of filters and you can also request some stuff that you want to see yourself. So after you when you do the survey and you think, okay, you know what? You want to see one, two, three, four. This is very important to us to just compare us to other cities or compare you to yourself from previous years. So just let Philip, no, I'm just going to let me know and I will tell you. Um, well, cities have access to, like, these graphs or something in JPEG, or is there a way that they could, I mean, you can always screenshot something, right? But is there a way for them to get some of these cool visualizations, like if they want the map and stuff, oh, yeah, or a yeah. report or something? Absolutely. So, when we... Uh, Done making the Tableau workbook, we put it in the Philips website, the Greenscape's website, and from there you could like you could filter or you like get to the like for example, if I want to extract this one over here, I could just go here and extract yeah. it. Yeah. Or for example, if I want to just share a link, I could just go ahead and put share and share the link with oh. people, and they could just go ahead right right here. Or I could just extract it to like extract an image and put it like in a PDF file, or I could just use it in a presentation. Or just extract an image, just use it. Um, oh, there it is. Over here. Oh, that's like cool. in a PowerPoint or something like that. After you filter it, or even though if you don't want to filter it, it's fine. Um, if you just want to extract the data to a PDF file, you could do that too and have like a bunch of data in a PDF file, like a report or something like this. Uh, for example, if there is something that we did not cover and you want to analyze it further, but you don't have the data, you'll have the option of downloading all the data in the workbook. To your to an Excel file, just by clicking one thing, you could just download it to your um, to an Excel file and just have the file and do it. So, that's so we'll have that option. Wow. And for example, if um, if you want to put this workbook in the city website, um, you know, after asking for the permission, then we'll give you the codes and. Would uh, would each city need a if, if they want a place? No, no, no. Mm, don't need a have one. Yeah, so it's um, we'll just work with our communications team yeah. to kind of make it public. Well, before it gets embedded onto the Green Step Cities website, we will work with um, our communications team to do that to make sure it's public ready. Um, the MPCA does have a Tableau public account where everything is accessible. Right now, this is housed on our own internal server. But the idea is going to be on the public server, and then we'll embed it to the Green Step Cities website, which is also um, possible for your own website to embed the same code and show the Tableau report for your city. And interactive. And interactive. Ah. Wow. And it's always going to be the same thing. Either an internal web uh, server or uh, external server is going to be Interaction same. However, this is just for us to see some of the um, Any questions, concerns? So yeah, if I have any special requests that you would like to see or you think um, will be beneficial for other cities to see and for yourself or other people, let us know. So yeah. but most important thing is you get all data. As you can see, then you have one graph showing 100%, one graph showing 10%, and do the sub track by the whole thing. Oh, yeah, that's all I have. And, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, you can shoot throw up an email and you can send it to me. And move it and, uh, yeah, like I said, this is just only a sample. We create a whole for Okay. Um, 
Wow. Well, it's, um, as, you can, as you can see, it's pretty exciting because right now all you all we can do is go to each individual green, green step page for each city, and and you can download an Excel spreadsheet of, of the step four, step five numbers. But you, you know you have to go to each city page and download individual spreadsheets. This obviously allows this um, many views of the data. So, right. I think there's going to be this. Hopefully, you're feeling like it's like, oh yeah, I want to, I want to submit data because I can see it and really use it and make it. I mean, I think it really will help us all think much more. So, um, so that's the power. Do any of your cities use Tableau? I've not run across, uh, I've not run across any city web page that has Tableau data displays. So, okay. So, the city of Minneapolis uses it for voting data. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's the only example I can think of right now. Yeah. Okay. It's certainly very powerful. There's a cost. So if a city wanted to, uh, if, a, if a city wanted to be able to display other types of data, are we talking a thousand dollars? I'm not entirely sure. And I mean, we we're a state agent. I don't I don't want to hawk Tableau's product. We we yeah. we absolutely enjoy yeah. it, but yeah, probably um, others. Yeah, it's definitely you know up to the city to if they want to. Get the software. It's a pretty powerful tool. Um, we use it widely throughout the agency. It's pretty great at kind of just seeing all of your data if you have a ton of data. So. Yeah, it, it feels like from from me ha having worked with the um, uh, the software engineers uh, on our first floor, um, we created the, the Green Step website and did, and did it really. We had this very interactive process uh, to create the Green Step website. But if I want to make a change, if I want some other functionality on the Green Stuff uh, web page, I have to work through the software engineer. I have to pro ind individually program things. Whereas the, the power of Tableau is that there's so much prepared sort of code, basically code that uh, you're not you're not sitting there writing code for every little element, feature, functionality. So so that's just a Tremendous uh, expense. That, so that was our excitement to see. And, uh, and Paul and Joseph just said, oh, we can do that and we can do it quickly. And whereas our software engineer said, well, you know, our programmer said, well, that'll take a while to program and I have 10 other projects. So um, so I just want to, again, you know, can, you know, thank you for being so helpful to the Step Cities program. Yeah. So as far as rollout, so we will send an in, so a city that wants to submit data through the SNAP survey needs a separate needs an email invitation. Well, so um, we can create a list of the cities that want to participate. I don't know if you need a, a process where you ask all the cities who are part of the program if they want to submit data for step four, or they can just reach out to us and we'll send them a link to okay. the survey. Okay. We could do it in any number of ways. Number of ways. Okay. So, yeah. I think Paul, you and I will talk. And we'll, just, uh, yeah, we'll obviously make it clear. So we we'll use, you know, Twitter and the and the uh, member link. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So in terms of changing system, so LMC rather than that list serve, um, there's now member link. So um, when uh, so you any city or I can send out. A, Notice to all of you, but we, we're going to this member link, the LMC website, uh, rather than the list. Green Step City at LMC listserv or whatever it was. Anyway, so we'll send out, we'll, in various ways, we'll get out the uh, so ability to start using, <clears throat> uh, get a link to the survey. And we're thinking, we were sort of thinking, not January 1st, but February 1st, February 15th. As far as being ready with the survey, and then maybe at the same time the the, the Tableau, yeah, we'd have a page where then the data is going to flow to the Tableau. So, as far as being able to start typing numbers into the survey, it won't. It'll be in let's just say in February. So February, March, April. So so we have three months, and then May first is the deadline. So if we want to input data before then, if we are trying to meet that May 1st deadline, will that data automatically be uploaded into the SNAP survey or 
or we need to enter it again? No, so that was one of the other features is that if you have submitted from say 2016 or 2017, you won't need to do that because we have that data already. Um, okay. And we will pre-populate the survey. And the, the demo that we showed didn't have the pre-populated data, but what we plan to do is actually include, say, the 2017 data on there so you can see if you're step five city, whether there was improvement or not. Okay. Yeah, so you and don't so need like, to run or you, know, you don't need to kind of go back and have to gather the 2017 data again. Okay. Yeah. And what if it's 2018? Like, what if we're putting in data in the next month or so? I, what do you mean? If you wanted to start right away, I, th oh, okay. I think on the on the Great Plains Institute Step Four Five web page, I think we'll put in big bold letters. Um, I'm trying to think whether we should say don't you don't use the spreadsheet. I think we're I think we'll leave the spreadsheet up. Yeah. And I think we're going to say don't don't use this. Don't be putting number. Uh, well, yeah, I, yeah. I I don't think we want people to be using the spreadsheet because then you're going to have to be copying it. Yeah. So maybe use it for our own purposes. Just for your own purposes. Uh, wait to officially put it in until then. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, so there's not, yeah, so that because there's not going to be an automatic flow between the old spreadsheet and the SNAP survey uh, data box. And I, yeah, we don't want people making errors in transcription. So I think we're just going to say, gear up your own pro internal city process, um, get people ready to be gathering data. A link to the survey will be available and we'll, as it gets closer, we'll find the data. So I think that's how we're going to do it. Um, okay, any any other thoughts, comments, suggestions? Any uh, any webinar questions or chat box? Okay. At this point, it's it's um you know you all know me. It's easy enough to reach me via the contact button on the Greenset website. So send any sort of questions, thoughts, comments to me. As I said, I think it's going to be Kristen you're going to work with. So as you're getting into the nuts and bolts, and there's the question of, you know, I have a leased city building with only one source of energy. It's like, do I is that a city building? Do I need to submit it? Find questions like that that the guidance sheet is not obvious about, and and those guidance sheets, there's some, you know, we we continually refine them uh, when it comes to like. Uh, websites for urban forest canopy. Um, you know, we're making we'll make some changes to those, but you may have questions. So um, it will be Kristen who's going to be taking those. But um, for for right now, just think of me and send them to me. But, but certainly, when we get this sort of full launch and a, a new page, it'll be uh, Kristen will be the obvious person to identify her, and she'll become the the, the expert. Although I think this is just so cool that this is. And as I maybe mentioned to some of the existing step four, step five cities, um, the work group on my floor that does all kinds of other things, there are a few people who do a little bit of green step work, like their green step strategy advisor. But we just hired a, uh, a data person, a full time sort of data analysis person uh, from McAllister. So we're we're thinking that she could be useful, certainly looking at all this all this tableau. Uh, visualization this day that we're going to see. But I'm also thinking that that, that data person could be useful to your individual cities for um, data collection, data quality assurance. I mean, there may be questions around that if, if you don't have or can't easily get a hold of your city person. Uh, our person at the PCA, I, I think, is really interested in green stuff, and she may be, be helpful to be able to call on. So um, again, I let the step four five cities know that, but we'll, I mean, she just started work, so we're trying to figure out what we can do, but we want to sort of grab a little bit of her time to be of use to you as a step city. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Anything else? Then I think if we go, let's see. Um, just pass our, so our next, I was going to say we do have a, um, Oh, there we go. Yep. Okay. So, 
Uh, so our next workshop um, will be not the first Wednesday of the month in January, since that would be January 2nd, which seemed like a really cruel time to <laughs> people may be still, you know, skiing up north or whatever, or the beach in Geneva. So um, second Wednesday in January, and uh, this is um, Green Building Policies and Case Studies. Uh, this will be um, Peter uh, Lindstrom, uh, Mayor of Falcon Heights, and um, the uh, sort of energy finance specialist at the um, Clean Energy Resource Teams and Lisa Polish, who runs the Clean Energy Resource Teams program at the University of Minnesota. So they will be um, presenting policies. And we're talking about green building policies uh, next month because whereas we have, and we, we saw in some of uh, what Joseph was showing us, we, we have cities that have a lot of uh, green buildings, in, but in terms of and we have a but fewer, interestingly, I mean, did we notice many fewer city uh, green buildings, city owned green buildings than, than private buildings. Um, but we also observed there, there are not that many city policies that um, require sort of minimum levels in terms of green building uh, performance of buildings that cities own themselves. So we want to talk about a range of options. Uh, St. Paul has, has probably the well, there's, there, are, there are a few green tip cities that have policies, but not many. And we feel like, uh, um, and certainly for, uh, my gosh, certainly for school buildings, which cities don't control, although as you, you get in greater Minnesota, cities and school districts work much, much closer. So city councils and school boards work, work much more closely together. And we, we feel like this is one of the, sort of that sort of deepening, sort of really sort of pushing all of ourselves. We feel like uh, when cities build something, we all, cities need to be building at a higher level. We just, and we know we can do it. Um, if you get state bond money, you have to hire an architect who knows about um, building to the Sustainable Building 2030 standard. We're finding from case studies on the SB 2030 website that those buildings can be no more expensive than a building that performs poorly. So, but without a policy to drive city buildings, um, or private buildings where a city is perhaps providing a land write down or a subsidy. Um, uh, we won't get the sort of performance in buildings that are lock in long term cost savings and other benefits. So we want to talk, we feel like it's an important topic. So we're going to talk about that in January. All right. Well, thank you to the webinar um, participants. Sorry, you can't partake in the uh, bagels, cream cheese, um, a little bit of fruit and coffee. Um, but for the rest of us, please take a home for you and your work colleagues. Uh, take a bagel, cream cheese, a cup of coffee, and unless there are no more questions. Wow, ending early. What a deal. So, <laughs> lovely.